following God, walking with God requires you to follow in obedience. As a sheep follows the shepherd, the shepherd will hit the sheep on the head. The sheep does not fight back. I've never seen a sheep attack anyone before. I don't know if they do in the physical. But the sheep, the scriptures is perfect. I don't know if they do in the physical. I've never seen hit the sheep. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to lay a foundation or an introduction for the new teaching series for the month. And the new teaching series is titled, An Intimate Walk with God. An Intimate Walk with God. I want to encourage you that in all of your achievements on earth, in everything you will ever accomplish on this surface of the earth, make sure that the number one thing is an intimate walk with God. An intimate walk with God. Everything else will pass away. Everything else will fade away. But an intimate walk with God will guarantee longevity of everything else. This morning, I want to encourage us from scriptures. Our anchor scripture from this teaching is Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 to verse 3. And... Um, after we do that, I'm going to give us the anchor scripture for this introduction. Hallelujah. Are we there? Genesis chapter 3, chapter 17, verse 1 to 3. Genesis 17, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says... And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham. Well, to Abram. His name had not changed then. It was still Abram. And said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him. God talked with him, saying, and then the scripture continues. This morning, I want to lay the foundation for this important series of teachings from the scriptures. I want to lay the foundation for an intimate walk with God. I'll be talking about what it means, and I'll be talking about how to walk intimately with God, the requirements of walking intimately with God. To buttress my point this morning, let's go to Luke chapter 10. I want to read from verse 38 to 42. Luke chapter 10. verse 38 to 42. Don't worry, I'm going to take my time so that you can find the scriptures on time. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. The Bible says, and it came to pass as they went that he, that is Jesus, entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not 
be taken away from her. An intimate walk with God. Let me say this to you, that you can walk for God, but not walk with God. You can walk, W-O-R-K, for God, but not walk with God. Walking for God is the activities, the ceremonies, the religion, amen, religion. The traditions, the, act, the, 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 the makeups, the markups, the camouflage that a Christian can do. You can say the boss words. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a praise. You can say all of that and still not have a walk with God. You can be the pastor. You can be the, the Sunday school teacher. You can be the elder in the church. Amen? You can be the keyboardist. You can be the instrumentalist. You can be the lead worship singer. You can be the technical director in the church. Working and putting in hours, but not having a walk with God. It's very important. This scripture we read talked about two sisters. Jesus came to visit them. And one of them, Martha, got into the usual habit. I could imagine Martha has been very hospitable. If you go to Martha's house, she will make sure that you are okay. She will give you food, give you a good place to sleep, give you everything you need to be comfortable. And that is what she did when Jesus came. She came and she started making things happen. And her sister Mary was just at the feet of Jesus, learning from Jesus, learning from the master, drawing and tapping wisdom from the master. But her sister was engaged in the activity. And then you would have thought Jesus would stop Mary and say, Mary, go and help your sister. She is serving me. She is working for me. And that was what Martha too expected. But after a while, Martha saw that Jesus never stopped. And Martha came to talk to Jesus. Martha said, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to come and help me. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. But Mary, Jesus said, but one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. God is not interested in the activity as much as he is interested in the relationship. Christ did not come to die for us so that we can become pastors, so that we can become servants or do the activities, but for us to do the relationship, to have the relationship. This is very important. This is very crucial. I'm laying a foundation today and I'm, we are going to get into this in details this month by the help of the Holy Spirit. God desires a walking relationship, an intimate walk, an intimate fellowship with God. God desires that we get so intimate, amen, with him that we know him and he knows us. I think I'm getting ahead of myself, but let, let, me, let me backtrack a little bit. Walking with God is different from walking for God. Walking with God is the activity. Walking, with, walking for God is the activity. Walking with God is the relationship. The, the activity is not better than the relationship. God prefers the relationship, and that relationship will now birth 
the activity. Glory be to God. So God wants us to walk with him and fellowship with him. Because it is possible to walk for God and not walk with God. But it is impossible to walk with God and not walk for God. It is possible to walk, W-O-R-K, with God and not have a relationship with him. But it is impossible to walk with God and not walk for him. See what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Jesus was giving them a parable there, talking about the kingdom of God. The last days, what is going to happen? Jesus told them in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. He says, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In your name have we not cast out devils? In your name have we not done wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. Activity without a relationship with God is iniquity. Activity without a relationship with God, God counts it as iniquity. If you walk for God without knowing God and walking with God, it doesn't count. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. Is a waste of resources. In that scripture, Jesus never said, oh, you never prophesied in my name. Jesus never denied that they cast their demons out in his name. But he still said, depart from me, I do not know you. Because you did all those things in your own power. You did all those things with religion. You know, the Bible says that anyone that calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the Bible says, in my name, you will cast out devils. So, the devil himself is scared of the name Jesus. So, anybody that uses it. So, that's why a child can, say, can call the name of Jesus and even devils will bow. But it takes a mature Christian that has a relationship with God to be able to know that using the name is different from knowing the person. Knowing the person. The child may not have an opportunity because at their level, they are still growing to know the person. But an adult should know that knowing the person of Jesus is totally different from using the name of Jesus. So what does it mean to walk with the Lord? This morning, I'm just laying about foundation. Number one, it means to start an intimate relationship with God. That means God knowing you and you knowing God. Many people claim to know God, but God doesn't know them. Many people claim to be walking for God, but God doesn't know them. Having a walk, an intimate walk with God means having a relationship God can call you by your name. God can call you by your name. If you have never had an encounter where God calls you by your name, you need to go and check your walk with God. The little boy, Samuel, God went and called him and said, Samuel, Samuel, Abraham, God went and called Abraham, Abraham. Everyone in scripture that walk with God, God knew their name and called them by their name. If God hasn't called you by your name before, whether your native name, your middle name, go and check your walk with God. This is a sober statement that many may have ignored. But 
having an intimate walk with God starts and begins with a relationship with God. When I say intimacy, even in the context of marriage, the Bible says the man and his wife were naked but not ashamed. God wants us to be naked before him and not ashamed. He desires that level of intimacy. He wants that level of relationship. In Acts chapter 19, there were seven sons of a priest called Sceva. They had seen how Paul had used the name of Jesus to cast out devils. And they wanted to do the same thing. So they gathered a man full of the devil. <laughs> they locked themselves in the same room with the man. And they tried to, lay, to cast the devil out. Seven children, because their father was a priest, they thought they had the license. Friends, may I tell you this morning, your father's relationship with God has nothing to do with your relationship with God. Everyone must have that relationship, that intimate relationship with God. These seven children thought because they were children of pastors, the priests, they could use that authority. And in verse 15, the evil spirit answered them, this Jesus you are talking about, I know. And even this Paul, I know. But who are you? Who are you? And they couldn't answer that question. And the evil spirit pounced on them and killed seven children, chased them out in the public, wounded them, tore them naked, sent them out, disgraced them. Intimate work with God determines that you and I know God and that God knows us. We must not assume. We must ensure that we know God and that God knows us. Intimacy means that we are taking the step God takes and loving what God loves. To walk with God means you are taking the step God takes. If I hold your hands in the physical and I'm walking, for you to walk with me, your steps must be commensurate. Your pace must be almost equal, if not equal, to my pace. If you are walking with, it's different from walking behind. Amen? If you are walking with somebody, you are walking with them. If the person is walking behind you, the person is behind you. If the person is walking ahead, the person is in front of you. We are not talking about walking behind Jesus. We are not talking about walking ahead of Jesus. We are talking about walking with Jesus. That is taking the steps that he takes. As he moves, you move. As he stops, you stop. As he pauses, you pause. That is what it means to walk with the Lord. And not just that. Loving what he loves and hating what he hates. <laughs> loving what he loves. I remember one time, I think it was Valentine's Day, 2010. That's 12 years ago. Wow, glory be to God. I was invited to come and teach just to exhort a group of young people like myself. They were talking about love and what does it mean. And I asked them a question. I said, do you really love the Lord? Do you really love the Lord? They all said, yes, 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 I love the Lord. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me explain what love means. Well, let me explain what it means to love the Lord. Ha! And I began to preach. I began to teach. I began to show them from scriptures. I began to tell them what it means to love the Lord. Then later I asked them, do you now love the Lord? And I prayed for them and the fire of God broke out, broke out in that garden. So walking with God means loving what God loves and hating what God hates. You cannot claim to walk with God and love what he hates 
or hate what he loves. No. To walk with God means to love what he loves, to hate what he hates. Number four. Number one, I said to walk, to walk with God means to have an intimate relationship. God knows you. You know God. Number two, it means to take the step God takes. Stop when he stops. Move when he moves. Pause when he pauses. Number three, love what he loves. Hate what he hates. Number four, it means to have a covenant walk with God. What does this mean? To have a covenant walk with God. A covenant is between two people. Is an agreement between people sealed by an oath and established by blood. For you to have a covenant, blood must be present. Blood must be involved. Having a covenant with God doesn't mean shedding your blood, by the way. It means accepting Jesus into your heart. But there is a covenant. This is what I mean. If I have a covenant, okay, for example, I have a covenant with my wife, a covenant of marriage, okay? There are some well-defined terms of that covenant. Have, working with God means having well-defined terms with God. There are things God will tell you not to do. Because you are in a covenant with him. Other people may do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But God will tell you. You in particular. Do not do this. Or other people may not do it. And God will say you. I want you to do this, this and this. Having a covenant with God. Walking with God means being in a covenant walk with God. There are things other may do and get away with that you will do and not get away with because you are in a covenant with God. You are in a covenant with God. For example, some people may do some things in the church, in the sanctuary. You know, we talk about not, um, well, <laughs> I'm trying to think of an example here. But, but uh, just let me speak gener in general. Some people may have, okay, for example, I came and I put my bag there, right? To some people, God may be upset that they put their bag there. So it is working with God on a covenant level. And number five, what does it mean to walk with God? It means following God like a child. Following after God like a child. To walk with God means following God like a child. My little boy there is, is, is almost a year old. And if I hold his hand and I'm walking with him, if I turn this way, he doesn't argue with me. If I turn the other way, he doesn't argue with me. He just follows me. Many of us, we struggle with God. We we'll strive with God. We have our own ideas. You cannot walk with God and still keep your own ideas. It's impossible to walk with God and still have your own plan. Walking with God as a child means subscribing to God's plans. Following God like a child. When he chastises you, you apologize even when you don't understand it. When he gives you instructions, you obey. Following after God like a little child is what it means to walk with God. That is why walking with God requires, number one, to be saved. You've got to be saved. You have to be a child of God before you can walk with God. Jesus told Nicodemus, in John chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. To walk with God, you have to know God. That is salvation. And God has to know you. You must be born again. You must be born again. 
you must be born again. Another requirement is holiness. Holiness. Before I go back, before I, I speak on that holiness, I, I want you to know that this month of July is a special month. And one of the things that makes it special is that in the month of July, God calls all people to repentance. The Lord, I was having an encounter with the Lord yesterday, and he was showing me. He wanted me to understand the times and the seasons. So he was giving me a revelation about what the times and the seasons means. He said, I want you to understand the times and the seasons, what this seventh month symbolizes. And I took notes, and I started to write a few things. Some of the things I wrote was that the seventh month is the month of perfection. Seven is the number of perfection. If you understand scriptural numerology, if you have studied scriptural numerology, you will find out that seven is the number of God. Seven, seven is the number of perfection, I'm sorry. Three is the number of God. Seven is the number of perfection. And in Math, uh, 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 Psalm 138 verse 8, the Bible says the Lord shall perfect all that concerns me. Why, why am I saying this? The month of July, God wants all men to repent. If you read Numbers 29 verse 1, Numbers chapter 29 verse 1, you will see that the seventh month is very significant in God's agenda for repentance. Numbers 29 verse 1. The Bible says, and in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no civil work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. A holy convocation is a holy gathering where people come to God. God desires that in this particular month that we come to him. Salvation, very essential, very important in this particular month. God wants us to come to him. He repeats the script, same scripture in Ezra chapter 3 verse 1. Ezra chapter 3 verse 1. He says, and when the seventh month was come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. People gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. What is Jerusalem? The city of God. So, in this month, God wants us to come closer, draw nearer to him. That is part of the work of salvation. God wants us to become as one man with him. So, working with God first requires salvation. And then after salvation is holiness. Holiness. I think I'm already getting into the book of the month there. Holiness. First Peter chapter 1 verse 16. God says, Be thou holy, for I am holy. To walk with God it requires that you and I have a pure and a clean heart. For God is holy. For God himself is holy. So if we must walk with the Lord, we must be holy. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, he says, But as he also which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. You cannot walk with God in unrighteousness, in wickedness, in unforgiveness, in sin, in evil, in, 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 in wickedness, in hatred, in anger, in bitterness. We must let go of those things to walk with God. Recently, somebody offended me. He called me names. And it's different when somebody calls you a name. 
And when somebody types the name to you, <laughs> types the names, that means he settled down and composed. It wasn't instinctively. And I said to my wife, I said, we don't have to fight this man. Give him what he wants. Give him what he needs. Don't respond. And let's move on. Because I know, and, and what he was trying to fight me for, I'm right. I'm 100% right. Legally, spiritually, morally, I'm 100% right. He, he composed, started calling me some words that are unprintable. That's fine. And I stole my Bible. I said, let's give him what he needs, give him what he asks for. Let's follow peace with all men. God said in Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men and be holy. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. And we, I said to him, give him what he needs. Because I'm conscious of my work with God. There is nobody that I'm offended at. As I'm standing before you and before God, there is no unforgiveness in my heart towards any man on earth. People have offended me, I have forgiven them, and I will still forgive. I will still forgive. So to walk with God, we must come with a clean heart and a pure heart. It, it, you, it, it might make you look like the fool or like the weak one, but you are wiser and smarter than the devil when you are living in holiness and living in peace. You might look antisocial. Whatever it will cost you, your fellowship with God, your relationship with the Holy Spirit should be guarded jealously. Should be guarded jealously without sentiments. Holiness is a primary requirement to walk with God. People like Enoch, the Bible says Enoch walked with the Lord. Is that Genesis 5.24? Genesis 5.24. Enoch walked with the Lord and he was not because God took him. That man walked in the days of corruption. Yeah, Genesis 5.24. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. That was in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah. Enoch walked with God. What is your excuse for not walking with God? What is that sin in your life that you treasure so much than a fellowship with the Holy Spirit? You've got to let go. You've got to let go. Walking with God will cost you something. It will cost you holiness. It will cost you holiness. It will cost you to forgive, to forget. It will cost you to leave anger behind. It will cost you to be quiet. Because you don't want to talk and sing. It will cost you some things. People will call you names. They will, they, they, they will sidetrack you. They will marginalize you. But it's okay. You know what you're after. Because on the last day, I always tell myself something, and I'll share it with us today. I always tell myself, the, now that I'm upset and angry like this, if Jesus should come right now, everything I've done will be wasted. And that's painful. Everything I've done would not count. If Jesus comes right now, we will be judged by what we are doing right now. The state of your heart right now. I always tell myself, oh, I'm hungry, I'm upset. I want to fight this person. But I tell myself, wait. <laughs> By the grace of God, I've gone, so, I've gone a long way. I've gone too far with this Jesus. I don't want to lose everything just now. If he comes right now, I don't want to be disqualified. Friends, if Jesus comes right now as we speak, would you make it? Whatever sin it may be. Sin is like a stone. No matter how little you call sin, it cannot, it will always float. It will always sink, I'm sorry. It can never float. There is no such thing as a little sin. 
That's how the devil was able to tempt Eve. He said, is it not just to eat this? Just eat. Just eat, though. Just eat. You didn't curse God. Just eat. And Eve took the bait. And see where the whole world is today. There is no little sin. There is no greater sin than the other. You that you are keeping malice. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is asking me about malice today, but amen. You that you are keeping malice, you are not better than a murderer. You are not better than somebody who killed another person physically. You that you are lying, you are not better than the person that has unforgiveness or malice. No greater sin, no sin is greater. So we must, we must let everything go. Focus on God and holiness to walk with him. To walk with him. Number three, to walk with God, it takes obedience. And I've said these things in passing. It takes obedience. You must be willing to obey. Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 27, My sheep hear my voice and they obey me. Following God requires you to follow him sheepishly. 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 Forget your education. Forget your experience. Forget your knowledge. Following God, walking with God requires you to follow in obedience as a sheep follows the shepherd. The shepherd will hit the sheep on the head. The sheep does not fight back. I've never seen a sheep attack anyone before. I don't know if they do in the physical. But the sheep, the scriptures is perfect. When it talked about how the Lord directs us in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. It means that the sheep is easily formed. Forgot what you think you know. When you are following this Jesus, when you are walking with God, just let him lead. Let him lead. Forget what you know. Forget who you are. Just let him take over the wheels from there. Walking with Jesus requires obedience. None of us know tomorrow. We may know something about the past. We may know a little about the future. But nobody knows tomorrow. Only God knows tomorrow. We must be careful not to assume. This morning I was asked, I was talking to the Holy Spirit, and he warned me, he said, Never you do a project again without asking me. Just this morning, corrected me on something. Never you do a project again without asking me. And I'm talking domestic projects, not you know, big projects like, like what we are doing in this church. But domestic projects, things I think, okay, I can do by myself. Okay, should I, uh, should I buy a new chair? Should I buy a new table? Should I do this in my own house? And he said, never you again do a project without asking me. This morning, this Sunday morning, he told me that. And I said, yes, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ordinarily, somebody will say, what's the meaning of that? I, I, can't I do it? Is it not my house? Is that not common sense? Oh, no, 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 no. When you walk with the Holy Spirit, when you walk with God, you have to do it sheepishly. Sheepishly. Forget what you know. And walk with him. That is how to experience the walk with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be sharing a lot with us this month about walking with the Holy Spirit, walking with God. Uh, by the way, I hope you know that when I say walk with God, it also means walk with the Holy Spirit because God and the Holy Spirit are one. So I'm going to be sharing some things with us. What, what it takes, what are the benefits of walking with God and how do you walk with God? How do you walk with God? How do you walk with God? So please make sure that in all the services this month, you don't miss it. 
I think I have about uh, 10 requirements for working with God, six ways to work with God, and I have about maybe seven up there on, on, on what working with the Holy Spirit guarantees. I'm going to be sharing them with us this month as the Holy Spirit leads, and I believe God that this month, every one of us will have a deeper, closer walk with God in the name of Jesus. Every day, I want you to say this prayer. Every day, Lord, draw me closer to you. Draw me closer to you. There is a, a prayer or a song. Uh, day by day, the Lord God of thee, three things I pray. To see thee more clearly. Love thee more nearly. Follow thee more nearly. Love thee more dearly, I'm sorry. Follow thee more, more nearly. Day by day. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Paul did not say this as a baby Christian. Paul had seen the third heavens. He had had an encounter with God. He had seen God. He had seen all things. But he still said that I may know you. I want to walk closer. I want to draw nearer. I want to know you for myself. I want to know more of you. I desire to have an intimate walk with you. An intimate walk with you. Where I am naked before you and I'm not afraid. Where I'm naked before you and I'm not ashamed. Where I can bear all of my heart. I can approach your presence. Every time. And freely. In Psalm 24 verse 7 verse 3. The Bible says, who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord, or who shall come near his dwelling place? He that has a clean hand and a pure heart. Please take note of this. It's going to change your life. It's going to change your destiny. It's going to change everything about you. And the Lord himself will give us grace in the name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads this morning and just appreciate the Lord again. For sending his word to us. What does it mean to walk with God? Now we know. Let's ask God for the grace to walk with him. Father, thank you for your word you've sent to us this morning. Thank him again. Lord, thank you for opening my eyes. Let's ask him for the grace to be a doer of his word. A doer of his word. Lord, I want to walk with you closely. Draw me near to you this month, this day. Never let me go, my father. You are all I ever want. You are all I ever need. You are all I ever desire. Draw me close to you, my father. Draw me close to you. Let me walk intimately with you. Help me, O oh God, to be a doer of your word. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Before I pray for every one of us, I want to give a particular set of people an opportunity to come closer to God. You know, the Bible says, draw closer to me and I will come closer to you. You have to take the first step because Jesus has taken the first step before you 2,000 years ago when he let his son come to die for us so that we can take the step freely, boldly towards him. You know when you take the step this morning, the devil cannot stop you because the blood price has been paid. The decision is all yours now. The decision is no longer with the devil. The price to, to, for you to get out of sin, of wickedness, has been paid. All you need to do is to step out. This morning, you want to step out of sin. You want to step out of wickedness. You want to step out from serving the devil to serving Jesus. You want to say, Jesus, 
receive me this morning as your son. Forgive me my sins. Please, if you are in that category, please rise up on your feet wherever you are. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. And say this prayer after me. Or maybe perhaps you were once walking with Jesus. But something along the line corrupted your heart. Your hands are not pure. Your heart is not pure. You are struggling with sin. You are struggling with forgiveness. You are struggling with, with immorality, sexual immorality, pornography. You are struggling with addictions. You are struggling with any kind of sin, no matter how little. The sin of lying, exaggeration. But this morning you want to return to Jesus. You want to come to him. Please join in that category also. I will pray for you. Please close your eyes, bow your heads, and say this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning just the way I am. I come naked before you. Please forgive me of my sins and wash me with your blood and make me your child again. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I know that I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Let me provide you, Father, I want to thank you for these ones who have taken the step, the bold step, to come out from darkness to you, from the power of Satan to you, to confess you as the Lord of their lives, and to become a member of your family. Thank you, Father, for these people. I pray that your grace will be for them. May they never regret their decisions. May they never forget their decisions May, they, may, may their decisions today be empowered by you. May grace be released for them to maintain this decision all the days of their lives. Let nothing draw them back to the world. Let nothing take them away back from you. I burn every bridge of the enemy that may be connecting them to that sin, that evil lifestyle, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree that sin shall not have dominion over us anymore. For we are not under the law, but we are now under the grace of God. Thank you, precious Father. And Father, on the last day, when you come to take us all home, may our garment be white as snow, may no iniquity be found in us, and may we be prepared and ready to be raptured with you forever. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's rejoice and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer, congratulations. I'm very happy for you. That is joy in heaven. And we rejoice here on the earth for you becoming a child of God. Please, I'd like to hear from you. So please send us a message on any of our social media platforms where you may be watching from. Uh, and let us know that you made a decision for Christ today. And somebody from our team will reach out to you and um, will bring you in to be discipled and for you to walk in the newness of life that God has for you in Jesus' name. Or you can also send us an email. Send us an email at newbirth at tola.org. Newbirth at tola.org. N E W B I R T H at T H O L A dot O R G. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The rest of us, I want us to rise on our feet and just appreciate God this morning for His word that He has sent to us. Jesus, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory for your word that you've sent to us. We appreciate you, we celebrate you. There is no one like you. 
in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you that the grace to walk closely with Jesus, to walk closely with the Holy Spirit, to walk intimately in fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that grace is released upon you in the name of Jesus. No more going back. Every sin that does easily beset you, today the Lord is setting them away. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. As you go forth, you will go in peace. You will return with a testimony in the name of Jesus. Every issues of your heart, the Lord will bring them to pass this month. God will give you a, a testimony that will shake the people around you and even shake you yourself in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that this week as the day, and every day in this week are the days the Lord God has made. Therefore, you and I shall rejoice and be glad in them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord, you and I shall return every day of this month. We shall come with singing unto the house of the Lord, and everlasting joy shall be upon our head. We shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and weeping shall flee away from us. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let me give you one minute if there's anything you want to ask of the Lord this week or this month or even today. Go before the Lord and make those requests. Everything that you desire. The Bible says in Mark eleven twenty four, Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. What you desire, make sure you pray about it. And pray with faith. Let's go before the Lord in one minute. Make sure you ask the Lord. Make sure you are talking to the Lord. Whatever you desire, don't let it stop as a desire. Pray about them. Pray believing, and the Lord will give to you. Father, thank you for hearing our national prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Now go in peace. I decree the word of the Lord upon your life from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17, that the God of this commission, my God, will give you the desires of your heart. This month is a month of jubilation for you and for me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. In Jesus' name. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Now let the redeemed of the Lord say so. My time of favor has come. One more time. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. My time of favor has come. Of the Lord says so, my time of favor has come. Of the Lord says so, my time of favor has come. Of the Lord says so, my time of favor has come. Of the Lord says so, my time of favor has come. Of the Lord says so, my time of favor has come. Of the Lord says so, my time of favor has come. Good of the Lord says so. My time of favor has come. Good of the Lord says so. My time of favor has come. Good of the Lord says so. My time of favor has come. Good of the 